Hello, let's do a physical spinning dagger thorn explosion critical build that focuses on both armor and dodge rate. Skill board should look something like this. Let's start with the spinning dagger. It's physical damage, confidence, quick attack, fine weakness, piercing. For thorn explosion, it's additional physical damage, area effect, fine weakness, slaughter, winding wind. For movement abilities, it's roll with leap attack, with disarm and use count. For attack enhance, it is vital strike with enhance effect, increased duration and time acceleration. For Siphon Life, it's Time Acceleration and Increased Duration. For Shout of Provocation, it's Enhance Effect, Hushed Shout, Lingering Shout, and Buff Activation when hit. For Shout of Justice, it's Buff Activation upon Crowd Control. For Toggle, it's Enduring Pain. For Attack Seal, it's Seal of Critical Chance. There are some changes that you can make to your skill board. For example, you can use Marksman instead of Vital Strike. However, Vital Strike is gonna be better early into the game. Instead of using Seal of Critical Chance, you can use Seal of Condensed Destructions. The damage is kinda gonna be close to each other. Instead of using Winding Wind on Torn Explosion, you can use Acceleration, which is gonna be more attack speed. Or Preserve Mana if you have some mana issues. Instead of using Enduring Pain, you can use another toggle that's called Counter Attack for extra dodge. If you don't need any toggles, you can use any of the defensive seals, that would be Chaos, Seal, Elemental, Resist, Seal, Dodge or Physical Domain. For Zodiacs there is one important thing to remember, that you always want to spend your points first on two specializations. So that's gonna happen on 22 points, on 45 points and on 70 points. So let's start with Afros into Wanderer into gem, into prella, you can pick up whatever resists you need the most at the time, into leaf, into dawn, you're gonna get two extra points when you finish the quest in the end game area, basically in saluto, you can start with uplift, overpower, strike damage amplification, and after those two points you can pick up convert mana, and you can remove some strike and pick up area, area damage. Contrast, Frost, Nemera, Convection, then the second spec is Hail, same thing, you're gonna get two extra points by doing the quests. You can go into Sharpness, into Attack Critical Rate and Damage, and then into Strike Damage Amplification. Then Scent, Maggot, you might not have enough uh, stats to do this, so, but whenever you reach uh, Strength, Intelligence and Dex 200, you can pick up those points, this is gonna be the most damage you can pick up for 5 points. Then into Leia for dual wielding, then into Pharma for some HP Amp, Hunter, Blacksmith, then the third spec, you, first of all you want to pick up HP Absorb Limit, then into Capable and then into Area Damage, and lastly is Typhoon for some armor penetration. For itemization is simple, we are looking for all the critical we can get. In this case for the Daga, the highest critical base is 11. On the affixes, we are looking for gear critical rate, this is the main one. You always want to roll this first. After that, you can get some critical damage, some physical damage flat, some physical damage multiplier, some weapon speed or weapon attack flat. What rolls are gonna be good for you is gonna depend on what stats you need the most. Sometimes physical flat can be uh, better than physical damage multiplier or vice versa. On the neck we are looking for critical damage implicit neck. 
On the neck itself, you can only roll physical damage flat, physical damage multiply. These are two offensive rolls. Then you can get some HP or some resistances or a hit rate, depending on your stats. For the ring, again, we are looking for critical rate implicit ring. On the mods, you can roll attack speed, physical damage, attack critical rate, or critical damage. Again, attack critical rate is going to be the most important one. Then, depending on what you need the most, you can roll some critical damage, some attack speed, or physical damage multipliers. After that, it's just stats, resistances, or some HPs on the prefix. On the armor, on the chest, you want to get some HP flat, HP multiplier, and gear dodge rate. Gear dodge rate is the main one. On lower tier items, dodge rate flat can be better, but after you get high tier items, rolling a multiplier is always going to be a better choice, as it's going to give you more. On the suffix side, whatever resistances you need, and if you need, you can roll some hit rate. On boots, the main difference is that, that you want to focus on movement speed, as it's the only way to get movement speed early in the game. Then, of course, you can focus on offensive rolls, like projectile damage, then on some dodge rate if you need, and then resistances. Or again, you can roll some hit rate if you need to. For champs who want to get Hamal, for physical damage and HP, level for dodge rate and projectile damage, and the lesser for area damage. On the champ themselves, you want to get critical chance or critical damage, then damage multiplier. After that, it's up to you. You can get HP multiplier or HP flat or chaos or elemental resist, depending on, on what you need the most. Skill board should look something like this when you are later into the game. So what I want to talk about is my choices for the Awakening. So for the Spinning Daga, I chose Verity. Basically, I made my Spinning Daga to, do, to deal a little bit more single target damage with an increased projectile size. However, I can't leak chain, split, or multi-shot. However, the projectile pierces all. On Thorn Explosion, I picked up Origin, as Origin increases my map clearing, cause it changes one projectile into three and gives area effect amplification. With that in mind, I added area effect on top of it and awakened it to area effect amplification. So what happens right now? My spinning dagger does decent amount of single target damage and the clear is not bad as the projectile size is kinda big. And my Thorn Explosion adds more to the map, map, map clear with the Origin Awakening. But I kinda try to stack as much area effect to increase the explosion range to more than 280. When you reach explosion range 280, what happens is that those projectiles from the Awakening they can start overlap on small targets. So my Thorn Explosion becomes a good map clearance skill and it adds a little bit of damage to a single target. It's still not as good as Source Awakening, but if you awaken to Source, it's just only single target damage and it adds absolutely nothing or very little to the map clearing. So I kinda try to balance it. That's why I chose Origin and I start to stack my explosion range. On the Link runes, there are not that many changes. I'm still using Confidence, Quick Attack. The main changes amplify physical projectile damage. It's much better. Then Fine Weakness. On Thorn Explosion are the main changes. So it's Strike, it's Mana Storm and Lower Armor. Lower armor is actually really good because it's a debuff on NPC. So whenever you debuff with lower armor, it also increases the damage of the spinning dagger. So this is a nice damage, somewhat utility rune. After that, everything is kinda similar. Thanks for watching. And this is basically a proof of uh, overlap. If you have any questions, you can find me on Twitch. I'm streaming every day.
Have fun.